Hi, I'm Paul Modiano from Logical Developers, and in this video, we're going to go over how to implement an audit trail in IronSpeed Designer. Well, let's start with the why. Why would we have to implement an audit trail, or want to? The main reason is that we want to make sure we have a, a good idea of who created a record, when it was created, by the same token, when it was updated, and by whom. So there are a number of ways to do that, this uh, in Iron Speed Designer. I'm going to go over a couple of those ways. I'm going to start this by creating an Iron Speed application from a Southwind database that comes uh, in your sample databases folder within your Iron Speed folder. And I'm going to light up a couple of uh, tables here. We have orders. We, had ca we have categories, and I'm just going to let it create whatever it wants to right now. And we're going to go right through and just say, just tell it to go. Let's let it rip. Let's look at the resulting application. Here we see our list of orders. And if we go and we edit an order, we see a couple of things. We see that there is a created by, there is created on, updated on, updated by, and these are all selectable. Um, but the problem is, how do we automatically assign those values when adding a record? Well, we're going to have to do a couple of things uh, to, to look at that. Let's go and let's look at the add record page. Um, if we go to that page, you can see that it's asking you to uh, to select these things. We obviously want uh, this to be done automatically. In IronSpeed there are a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to go briefly go over the first way uh, before I go over the second way which is more preferable. The first way is to do an audit trail at the page level. And by that I mean that we would go to the Add Orders page itself and I could then go created on and instead of this uh, created on default value I could set this to now uh, and that would mean that every time uh, I visit the add orders page that field will be filled out uh, similarly updated by can be updated with the ID of the user who is entering the information now like I say, this approach will certainly work, but it's not preferable. And the reason is because very often there is more than one add order page. There, In this case, there's also that pop-up. Um, there is uh, possibly uh, many other places that you may want in your application to add an order. And why would you need or want to recreate all that work each time you did that? Um, you don't. And that's why we really want to do this on the databases layer. This database tab over here will show you the databases and this is a place where we can actually set our our formulas uh, at the database level so any page that is created will automatically follow the rules we set for it here. Now we could start by going to created on and tell it that when inserting a record set this value to now and that will take the current time and date and stamp it on whenever we're putting in a record and it'll do that automatically now similarly we can go updated on and we could say when updating a record make this equal to now as well so that's been done now for two values. The two values that remain are created by and updated by. Now the only problem is before we can really give that a value, we have to add security to this application. And that means that once we have assigned security, the logged in user will automatically have a user ID that we can apply to the created by and updated by field. So let's start by putting together the application security wizard, tell it that we'll do database. And right now we could even say uh, there are no roles for this application. We'll keep it uh, simple. And we're going to 
tell it, it says what uh, we're going to use the sales rep table and we're going to use for the username, the email address, we have a password field and sales rep ID and we're going to leave this as it is and we're going to just say that for all pages only signed in users and and we're just going to set that and that's it. Now that we've implemented security we can go to the created by and say that when inserting a record let us set this to user ID and that'll automatically populate that numeric field with the currently logged in user. We could also do the same in updated by. So say when updating the record and that does the whole thing. Now we should run this just to show you but then there is one last step that you want to do and I'll show you that. Now that our application is running I'm going to log in as one of the users and I'm going to go to the orders and I'm going to select an action I'm going to add and here is one of the problems uh, it's still showing me created by updated by uh, created on all of that stuff and so we really want to take those away but let's say for now we don't do anything and we just say we just fill in a few things and leave the rest blank and we save the record. Well, if we go and we edit the record, we see that it's put created by Fuller Andrew, created on, so it did what it was supposed to do. The last thing we want to do now is hide these for the add and edit page. So we go back to our application and we go back to the pages and an easy thing or an easy way to do this is take out the labels and make these fields invisible by going to our properties and setting visibility to false. Create it on, we do the same thing here, set visibility to false there, create it by, and updated by, and we get rid of that label and it's done. So if we run our application for a final time we get this. So if we log in to the application and we go to our orders and we add, we decided to add an order, what we see is that those fields that we made invisible are not there. But if we fill something in and we save our record and then we go to edit our record we could see that everything is filled out the way it should. Of course, you would also ultimately want to make those same fields invisible on your edit record page as well. I hope that this video has been helpful. For more information, you can visit the forums or knowledge base at Iron Speed Designer or visit us at logicaldevelopers.com. Thanks for watching.